Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 48. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 5.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet EVSD2 for expected value and standard deviation. And we have a great example here. Last video we talked about how to correct, calculate standard deviation and expected mean from a probability distribution. Now here we have a discrete variable, units. So units, you can have one, two, three, et cetera. So that makes it discrete. And what we've done is uh, we've, from past data, determined that when buying goods for a retail store, perishable goods, and we've rounded the numbers, right? We get approximately 500, 10% of the time. We have to buy 600 items for whatever time period, 15% of the time. 700 items, 15% of the time, et cetera. So all the way down to 1,100, that's 5% of the time. So and here's our probabilities. This was constructed from past data. And we're going to create a small budgeted income statement to estimate what's going to happen in the next time period based on this probability table. Well, to do a budget, you need a type of average to then use that to predict what your sales and expenses are going to be. So this is a perfect situation probability distribution, units, that's our x, number of units to buy. Here's our probability. We can go ahead and calculate our expected value or mean. The term we use is, but really, it's, it's a mean. Expected value is just a synonym, right? And then we want to calculate our standard deviation and then use uh, our expected value to calculate a but like a type of budgeted income statement. All right, let's first add these up and make sure that this, all these probabilities add up to one. So Alt equals, and sure enough, they do. And you, we could visually see that they all are greater than zero. That's the first requirement. This was the second requirement for it to be a uh, probability distribution here. Now, our expected value. We saw our formula last video. You have to take each individual x times the probability, each individual x times the probability. Do all those multiplying and then add. We saw also last video, there's a great function to do exactly this, equals sum product. Sum product is great because what will it do? It'll take two same dimensioned ranges multiply the corresponding elements, and then add. So notice the screen tip, array one, comma, and then array two. And it doesn't matter in which order you multiply, of course, because one times two is the same as two times one. All right, and so then I hit Enter. So there's our mean value, our monthly order quantity. Now, let's calculate standard deviation. Now, last video, we saw how to do this longhand. And in our textbook, they show you how to do this method right here. So they say x minus mean, that's the deviation, x individual value, right, minus our mean calculated. And then we square it. So we did that for each individual value. Now, I actually did it over here just same formula as I did down here, because we're not going to do this. But you see, you have to fill up this whole column here, right? Each one of those. Last video, we saw how to avoid doing this calculation and doing a single formula solution, which we're going to do here. But this is how they did it in the book, right? And then they say, once you get that, you do some product of here's the deviation squared. That's our formula. Take each individual deviation squared. Multiply it by a probability. Since the two columns of values are the same size, we can use some product. And then, of course, to get the standard deviation, we take the square root. All right. Now, when you're building a formula like this, single cell formula, and in fact, if you learn it from the outset like this in Excel, then when you get out there and you're doing this type of calculation in your job, you're already thinking like that. So I don't have the, oh, yes, I do have the, the PDF. There, there's the formula, right? If you you know memorize a formula like this, you can see right inside the parentheses, there's all of our x's minus our mu squared times our probabilities. So if you switch your thinking, instead of seeing this means sigma means to add them all up, 
In Excel, if you just switch your thinking and you think, oh, that x is a whole column of value, and these probabilities are a whole column of values, and you're multiplying them, boom, you automatically think of some product. So in some ways, it's more useful. I mean, it's you, you see this in statistics textbooks, but when you're out there doing these calculations in your job, you're not thinking like this, right? You're using Excel. So in some ways, to I just totally messed that up. I went into the wrong view. So view, I'm going to click normal. So in some ways, to learn it this way and think of it like this way is more useful. I'm just going to do my sum product right off the bat. Now remember the first inside part is take all of the x's and subtract the mean. So I'm going to take all of my x's, there they are right there, and subtract the mean. Now that subtraction we saw um, we're subtracting that single value from everything in this column. This is actually called an array calculation. We know that we have to force that subtraction first, so we put that in parentheses, and then caret 2. Now, the trick is we, we already have these here, so to prove ourselves that this actually is going to deliver the whole column, but instead of a column in cells, it's a column in a formula, we highlight it and hit our evaluation key, F9. That is just so beautiful. Look at that. Now, by all means, when you're learning how to do this, and certainly this is exactly how I learned it, I would always do it both ways. But then at some point, you know, you get used to it, you think of, you think of it like this, and then you just do it. Now, this column times this column, so we type a comma, we get to the second array. Now, this will give us the variance, right? We need to take the square root to get our standard deviation, so we simply can put two functions together. This sum product is just delivering a single number, so we go to the beginning and do square root. All right, so square root of that, ding, ding, there is our standard deviation in a single cell. Don't have to do all this, but by all means, do it when you're learning. Later, you do it that way. Standard deviation tells us the variation in the data, the spread in the data, how fairly the mean represents its data points. And the mean, of course, is the long-term average or expected value. Now let's use this value right here in our income statement. So down here, I make this gigantic. Alt-WG zooms in like that. What we have here is we have price per unit. We've estimated that for the next month, uh, this will be our sales price, this will be our cost, and here's our assumed units that we're going to sell. So watch this. For the sales, we say equals, well, our assumed units, right, times the price we set. But we have to buy these goods in advance, and up front I said these are is an example of perishable goods, right? So we can't really return them. We had to buy these up front, so we bought 790 of them. So when we do our cost calculation, we say our 60 bucks, not times the 650, but times the 790, right? And now we can do our gross profit. Sales minus our expenses, right? Gross profit is uh, a blunt measure of profit. It doesn't have all the expenses, just the expenses of buying the goods. And so there is our gross profit. And then we could easily change this. Assumed unit sold, um, whatever, 500. Oh, we only sold 250. Then we have a big fat loss. 500. All right, so we'll leave it at there. Now, this example here was a great example a discrete variable we're counting. Now I want to show you the same or same setup here for not a discrete but a continuous variable. And I know I'm kind of cheating because we don't talk about continuous variables till next chapter. But this example, if you go on to study finance or take a finance class, you'll see all the time it's an incredibly common calculation done for stock return estimations. Now here's our situation. We're on uh, expected value um, standard deviation three sheet. 
Here we've estimated our state of the economy. We're looking into the future. We've estimated, oh, okay, the boom is 0.15. Normal is 0.3. And the possibility of a bust is 0.55. We also, from past data, we're looking at stock A, B, and C. And from past data, we've estimated that in a boom, stock A, you know, this is from past data, data averaging, right? Boom, we earn 15%, normal 7, and in a bust, 0.02. Stock B, boom, we earned a 25% turn, normal 13, and in bust, uh, minus 13.5. And then stock C, a boom is 11, normal is 10, and the bust is 0 0.03. So we want to calculate what's called expected return. In finance, you'd say expected return in instead of expected value, and the standard deviation. And guess what? The calculation is exactly the same. So the only tricky part here is we're doing one, two, three different stocks. So we have some x values here that all need to be multiplied by the probability that the uh, state of economy, economy will occur. So we're still going to use what? The multiplying this times this, this times this, this times this, and then adding. So of course, we use some product. Array 1 is going to be this. Now, I'm going to copy this formula boop, to the next column for stocks and the next column. So that needs to be locked, F4 key, comma, and then the three cells above. That way, when I copy it over, the dancing ants will move to the next stock. That is absolutely awesome. A little knowledge of some product and cell references, and we can convert a really complicated, time-consuming calculation on a handheld calculator to just simple control enter and then I'm going to copy it over. And I'm going to check the last one. The green box is in the right place, the blue box. Boom. So those are our expected returns. And what it means is we're at we're kind of taking an average, right? We've estimated our probabilities for the states. Here's the return. So it's a type of weighted average or expected return. All right, and uh, given that the future is uncertain, this is a method that people use. So we expect 3.25% on this, uh, less than 1% on this, and uh, about 63 on this. Now let's calculate our standard deviation. Just like um, last example, we're going to start off, and I'm going to just type square root because I know that's going to eventually go in front of some product, and then just do my sum product. Again, after you do it a while, you kind of get the hang of it. Now, what is it that we do for standard deviation? We have to calculate the deviations. So in parentheses, I'm going to take the particular values, the x's, minus the expected return. Now, we know that that is an array calculation. Each one of these individual x's will subtract that individual value. Now notice something about Excel. This, for, this cell right here is calculating standard deviation for this stock. And those are all relative cell references. So when I copy it this way, the blue box and the dancing ants will move perfectly. Close parentheses and then caret 2, comma, those are, these are the deviation squared. You know, when we did this before, you highlight, you could see, you'll calculate the three values, right? But what do we always do with the deviation squared? We have to multiply them by what? Our probabilities. So I highlight those, and this is F4 to lock it. Close parentheses on the sum product. The nice thing about building a formula like this is the color coded um, close parentheses. So you can color code and see there's a green there and a green there. You also have a second method of understanding whether you have enough close parentheses to finish the formula. The screen tip here says some product, right? But as soon as I close it off, it then is polite and says, oh, now you still have to put the close parentheses for the square root. All right? Control Enter, and then drag it over. All right, so there is 0 0.063. Standard deviation, whoa, 0 0.15 and 0 0.03. So which one uh, has the highest return? This one. Which one has the smallest standard deviation? In, in uh, finance, they call it a proxy for risk. It's an estimation of risk. It means the volatility of the stock. Which one has the smallest? Well, this one. Man, clearly, stock C is the winner here. Now, what do we do? We learned back in chapter 3 the coefficient of variation. 
we have different means that are far apart, so it's really hard to compare these standard deviations. So what do we do? There's two things we can do. The one we learned in chapter 3 is standard deviation divided by mean. Now what that means when we do this equals standard deviation divided by mean, this is division. Anytime you do division, you get a number. So I get 1.9. That 1.9 means for every one unit of mean, meaning a single percentage point, there's going to be 1.9 approximately percentage points of standard deviation or risk. Now, once we do that, that calculation and copy it over, we can compare. Right? This is standard deviation per unit of mean. So again, this is a way of comparing the variation or the dispersion or the spread in the data or the risk in terms of stocks. That is the smallest. Clearly, that's the winner. Now, in finance, they uh, do, this is standard deviation divided by mean, but the inverse of, of it is mean divided by standard deviation. Now, what does this mean? That means when we do the division, there's going to be a 1 in the denominator. So it means for every one unit of risk, standard deviation, what's the return? So this one's the inverse, so I'm going to say mean divided by standard deviation. We'll come to the same conclusion. Here, we're looking for the biggest number, right? For one unit of standard deviation, what's the return? Boom, that one's the biggest. Second biggest, smallest. Now, so for this calculation, since it's and I'm going to add some green here just to emphasize that there's a formula there. So for this calculation here, we're looking at mean per one unit of standard deviation or risk. So it's the biggest. But here it's the opposite. This is standard deviation per one unit of mean, so it's risk. This is telling us a relative measure for risk. That's the small, so we like that one. This is telling us a relative measure for mean. That one's the biggest, so we like it. All right. Uh, probability distributions uh, and expected return or expected value and standard deviation for a finance example. And then we saw a, an accounting example here uh, for estimating a budgeted income statement. All right, see you next video.